proof that the Antichrist is here. He is sitting in God's temple, the hearts of man. Across the pages of the scriptures, we are introduced to the man who is referred to as the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, the first beast. This man is none other than the Antichrist. The Bible reveals to us clearly that there will be a man who will take center stage. He will be a man like no other. He will be charming. He will be charismatic. He will be magnetic. He will be the solution that the world has been seeking for. When this man comes, the world would have never seen a man like him, because this man will be energized by the very power of hell. Some Christian circles believe that this man has already been born, and now it's just a matter of time until he is revealed on the stage of mankind. We don't know for sure if that is true or not, but what we do know is that when he comes, his primary objective is to be worshipped. He will want to be worshipped and exalted. He will want to be uplifted. All the adoration that rightfully belongs to God, he will want it for himself. This is the age-old story. The devil has always wanted to be worshipped and adored. This is why he was cast out of heaven. He wanted to be worshipped and adored. Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the highest. The devil tempted Jesus Christ on three separate endeavors. The three areas Lucifer tempted Jesus with is the three areas he tempts people now also. He wanted Jesus to create bread out of stone in order to satisfy his own hunger. Then he wanted Jesus to jump from a pinnacle and tempt the promise of God, which says that the angels will come to his rescue so he would not fall. And lastly, he wanted to tempt Jesus to kneel before him in exchange for the kingdoms of the world. This last one is the one we will be focusing on. Luke 4 verses 5 through 8 says, And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The only question is, what did the devil want from Jesus? Well, the same thing he wants from everyone from the smallest creature of the earth to you and I. The devil wants to be worshipped, to be adored, to be put in the place of God. He wants to be God himself. He has always wanted this from the beginning. His goal has never changed, nor will it ever. He wants every knee to bend towards him. And this is what the Antichrist will want from everyone when he comes. He will want the world to worship him. He will proclaim himself to be God. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 through 4, we see that in the last days there will be a great falling away, an apostasy among those who once followed God. People who once used to follow the true and living God will turn away and fall away from the faith. And in the throne of their hearts, God will no longer occupy the space, but the abomination that is the Antichrist will reign over their lives. They will give him full authority, not only over their lives, but also their souls. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 through 4 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is a future event, but the walls to the kingdom of the Antichrist have already been built before our very eyes. Yet... A lot of believers are not paying attention to this fact. The Antichrist is already on his throne, waiting for the doors of his kingdom to be opened. However, even though the doors are yet to be opened, 
He has already sent his servants out into the world to gather followers and subjects in anticipation for his big reveal. Many still view the coming of the Antichrist as a future thing. No, it is not. The Antichrist is here already, and many are waiting at his kingdom doors. The proof that he's already here is evident to see. Just by looking at the world, he's creeping into the hearts of mankind and secretly putting himself in the throne of their hearts. The majority of mankind is ignorant to this. They don't realize that he is already in control. John clearly states that the spirit of the Antichrist is already on the earth working. 1 John 4.3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. His spirit is here. His spirit is ascending to throne of this physical world, but he is already sitting on the throne of people's hearts. I remember hearing a sermon about this topic by Pastor Wilkerson. He stated, 2 Thessalonians 2.4, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Stop looking at the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Stop looking at the temple where the Antichrist is going to sit on the throne and exalt himself. He's already on the throne. He's already in the temple. Pastor Wilkerson expanded on this point by quoting 1 Corinthians 3.16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? 1 Corinthians 6.19 Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. 2 Corinthians 6.16 What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. He concluded by saying, there will always be a Christ on your throne. You are the temple of God, and there will always be a Christ on your throne. Jesus Christ or the Antichrist. There is no way around this. If Christ is not on your throne, then the Antichrist is on your throne. I remember the first time I heard this, it shook me. I had to ask myself, who's on my throne? And I want to ask you, who's on the throne in your life? Who? Who is the Lord over your life? Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, But why do they call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Jesus offers up his simple teaching here by way of one probing question. The genuineness of your discipleship commitment will be demonstrated by the extent of your obedience to the commands of Christ. Why do you call Jesus Lord and ignore his commands? This shows who is on your throne in your life. The Antichrist is also arresting the hearts of believers by causing them to be established in nominal Christianity. I define nominal Christianity as serving God in your own convenient way, either good or bad. No push, no extra mile, no additional effort. Nominal Christianity will cause you to take the things of God lightly, but overly inspired towards worldly things. Nominal Christianity will cause you to pick and choose what commands of God you will do and what ones you will ignore. Nominal Christianity makes iniquity abound in the hearts of believers rather than being consumed with the zeal of God. Whenever you see these things in your life, you need to cry out to God for help because the spirit of the Antichrist is trying to lord it over the throne in your life. No heart is idle. It is either you have Jesus Christ sitting on your throne or the Antichrist reigning in the palace of your heart. It's either you have the spirit of the Lord in your heart or you are susceptible to the spirit of the Antichrist ruling over your heart. A lot of people shy away from this fact under the excuse of having a good heart. But against popular opinion, I'm telling you today that the mind of every individual on earth is preoccupied with either the spirit of God or the spirit of the Antichrist. This cuts across every individual on earth, and there is no exception to it. It is not enough to have a good heart or to be learned. It's about renewing your mind and submitting yourself to the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. God sees the world in two groups, sheep and goats. 
righteous and unrighteous. There is no neutral ground, according to the Bible. Thousands upon thousands of people have fallen into the snare of the devil by being careless with the disposition of their hearts. What do I mean by this? When a person says no to the things of God, or settles for a nominal Christian life, you are indirectly opening the door of your heart to the devil. And for the devil to secure such a heart, he preoccupies it with his own will and assignments. One of the devil's will and assignment for the end time is the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. Therefore, it is essential not to give room to the devil into your heart. The Bible says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Indeed, all that has to do with your life springs up from your heart. And the kind of life you live is a determinant of the power governing your heart. Make up your mind today and let God rule over your heart. Because if you fail to allow the Spirit of God to rule over your heart, the Spirit of the Antichrist will take his place. How is the Spirit of the Antichrist sitting on the throne of people's lives? Number one, through heresies and false teaching, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. The great falling away spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 through 4 is caused by these things. A lot of believers unknowingly backslide gradually as a result of false doctrines. They stumble away from the truth, unconsciously submitting their hearts to the leadership of the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit of heresy and lies that turns the heart of believers away from God. I honestly believe when the man of sin is introduced into the world, a great portion of his support will be from the church. Not from the true believing church of Jesus Christ, but from the church that has been led astray by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I honestly believe that these churches will support him when he comes. Why do I think this? Because the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. The Antichrist is here. And one of the evidence of this is that his spirit is sitting on the throne of the hearts of man. Who is sitting on the throne in your life?